After being the ancestral home of numerous generations of landed gentry since 1616, it is probably hardly surprising that a ghost should appear shortly after Pelsall Hall became a TB sanatorium in 1918. After being sold to Walsall Health Authority in 1917, Pelsall Hall Sanatorium was officially opened on the 23rd of October 1918 due to the nature of what was then an incurable and highly contagious illness the health authority had great difficulty in recruiting nurses which in turn delayed the opening of the tuberculosis sanatorium by November 1918 there were 17 patients 11 men, 6 women, a dog and a cat and at the end of the war discharged soldiers with tuberculosis were also admitted over Christmas that year, appeals were made for books and games for the patients. In 1920, Miss Spencer Jones was appointed matron of Pelsall Hall Sanatorium, at which time there were 17 male beds, 14 female beds and 6 children's beds. When Pelsall Hall Sanatorium first opened its doors, it still retained much of its original features, including beautiful stained glass windows, intricate plaster arches and coving. The servants' bells which remained in the passageway by the kitchen pantry still had on them the names of their rooms. Perhaps the most notable original feature was the magnificent principal staircase which was only to be used by the landed gentry of the hall. On entering the main door the big square staircase went straight up to the second floor. Around the staircase on the ground floor was a large hall, having in it a table, two chairs and a clock. It was a rather grand entrance. The kitchen, which was considerably bigger than that today, was situated at the rear of the building on the ground floor. Opposite to the kitchen was the scullery, larder and the servants' hall, which was next to the back or servants' staircase. Despite now being known as Pelsall Hall Sanatorium, it could be said that Pelsall Hall was firmly holding on to its past. A number of years ago I interviewed a lady who wishes to remain anonymous whose mother worked at Pelsall Hall Sanatorium shortly after it had opened. The lady's mother, Alice Garretley, was born in 1911 and worked at Pelsall Hall Sanatorium when she was about 14 or 15 years old in around 1925. The lady who I interviewed told me that at the time Pelsall Hall was not just used as a TB sanatorium but for those who had other incurable diseases and terminal illnesses. She related to me that one of her mother's friends, a farmer's boy from Little Worley, was admitted due to his shoes having so badly rubbed his feet that it had caused gangrene. In her time working at Pelsall Hall sanatorium the matron was said to be a big serious woman who had a big fierce black cat. Then the lady went on to tell me that the ghost of the black cat was often seen on the stairs, amongst lots of other things seen at the hall. Beatrice Dolloway, a friend of Alice, who lived in School Lane, Pelsall, also started working at Pelsall Hall Sanatorium in 1925. On one occasion, when doing her daily duties at the hall, Beatrice suddenly became aware of what sounded like the rustling of a bustle dress coming down the stairs. As she looked up, to her horror, she saw a woman wearing a crinoline dress standing on the stairs, looking down at her. Terrified by what she had seen, Beatrice screamed. Immediately, the matron shouted at Beatrice for screaming, as it would upset the other patients. Since the matron was so unaffected by what Beatrice had seen that day, perhaps she too had seen the lady in the crinoline dress. When the hall was owned by the landed gentry, there were strict rules to be followed regarding the two staircases. The rather ornate principal staircase was only to be used by the occupants of the hall. The back stairs or servant staircase which was situated in the centre 
of the hall was to be used by house staff. When the hall became Pelsall Hall Sanatorium, rules changed. Perhaps a previous occupant was insulted that a member of staff was about to climb the principal staircase when it was not her place to do so, or simply that she was unhappy with the changes to the hall and that there were now so many strangers living in it. It would be impossible to say who the lady in the crinoline dress might have been, since Pelsall Hall had been the ancestral home to a number of wealthy families from 1616 to 1917. However, it could be said that whoever she was, she was so strongly attached to her ancestral home that she refused to leave Pelsall Hall. As for lots of other things seen at the hall, regrettably I was unable to contact the lady again. Hence I guess we will never know what else was seen at the hall at that time.